Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous videos, we have seen how an artificial neural network model can be developed and how various performance measures like RMSC, correlation, NSC, and many others can be calculating using a code in MATLAB. In the current video, we will be talking about a simple and easy model, namely linear regression model as the name itself states it is a model which uses regression coefficients to be able to understand the mechanism involved in any uh, domain it is applied for as you all know there is a simple understanding of linear regression models which almost everyone is well aware of which is y is equal to mx plus c where m represents the coefficients of the variables of the input variables x and c represents the constants so when we think about how much percentage is governing what the coefficients m govern around 95 percent of the model whereas the constants govern around the remaining five percent so in this uh, model based upon previous literatures many of them have found that the constants can be omitted for developing a general and simple model although they can also be included but for the simplicity part in this video they are being omitted for an easier understanding and application of the model so this model when a one variable is used to develop the model it is generally termed as linear regression whereas when you have more number of input variables like two three or many then this model is named as multiple linear regression model so in this video we will be developing about this mlr model try to understand a simple problem which we'll be defining in the further part of the video so when we see the code which i have developed for this model as you have previously known uh, from the previous videos the first line represents the function which is developed to run the code so we'll go line by line and see what each variable does in this uh, code and how it is useful for developing of a good model so when we go to the first line here b is equal to regress of t comma ip as i've mentioned in the previous uh, uh, section that this model runs based upon regression so in this line we are trying to calculate various regression coefficients between the input and the target data set which we have so after we save the regression coefficients we can use that coefficients to be able to calculate the output we want which is here m represents the b values which we'll be getting from this and in the next line if you see the next two lines have similar uh, thing called length of ip of all rows comma first column so if we see here length of ip represents just the name of the input which you are giving let's assume it is data for now all rows comma first column here each two represents all rows so when we see here what we are asking it to tell is how many rows are there in this first column similarly in the validation data set as well ipv represents the validation data set name so it will tell you how much length is there on the validation data set after you know that now we'll go for training of the model so how can we do the training so if you see here a for loop is used here the main concept about why for loop is used is because 
as you remember this formula mx plus c we need to multiply each value of the input variable of x with the uh, coefficients which we got from here so what we do is we are saying in this line length of ip of first row comma all columns so we are asking it to tell us how many columns are there how many input columns are we giving in the input data set and in the next column how many rows are there which we have already told it here but we want to run it in a loop so we are mentioning with the value of k here so what does this do so firstly it will go to the first row multiply it with a constant save it in this line and then go back again and do for the remaining number of rows this goes on until all the rows are multiplied with the constant so as you already seen here this is the formula for one variable but when you have more than one variable the formula changes like this so what do we need to do here we need to add up the variables of m1 x1 plus m2 x2 so to do that what we are doing here is asking the model to save it in such a way that it adds up the input variables so this line gives you the training data set value so after you have got the training data set you can check its accuracy based upon the previous error formula which we discussed in the previous sets of videos which i will not be going into deep if you want to understand better you can go to the previous videos where i have take, uh, done a whole video to explain how this error code works i'll leave the link in the description and you can have a look at it for a better understanding so coming back to the code in the next set it's similar to the training data set where we don't calculate any more regression coefficients whatever the regression coefficients which we have here we'll be using those for doing the same thing for validation data set going to each row and multiplying it and getting its validation value then we will be checking again its validation result so this is how the code works now let's do one thing we'll see how each line of the code works by bugging each code this helps us to see how each line works and what are the results saving after each line so if we go till here so as i am reminding you again until unless you put the name of the variable you want to save in these brackets you cannot see those in the workshop whatever you are putting here will be represented in your workspace so let's just copy paste the first line and now okay before this now we'll see what is 70% of the data and 30% of the data so as i mentioned earlier for training and testing you can use 70 30 which is normally used in most of the models so we need to find out what is the 70% of the data we just divided by 0.7 If we just divide it by, sorry, multiply by 0.7, see that it is around 3289. So, <coughs> 3238 is the 70% of the data. So now we just copy this again, paste it here, and now what is the input variable name here? Data. What are the number of rows I want to use? First row to three, two, three, 
8 and what are the number of rows so the data which I have uh, the precipitation data of the current day let's assume for example it's January 1st precipitation January 2nd and so on similarly I have the press, uh, discharge of the current day that is January 1st let's assume second third so on so I'm asking the model to take these two as input and give tomorrow's discharge if you see here these two are resembling this is the second uh, January if we think we are asking the model to take these two as input and give this as output so in this here you can see you can tell that take first two columns as input and now we need to tell it what is the target for which it should train train in the sense just give the coefficients because here it does not run any training it just calculates the coefficients 1 is to 3 2 3 8 comma third column so these are the training inputs and training target now when we come to validation what we do is data of 3 2 3 9 is to end so until the end and 1 is to second column so this is how we give our training data set for validation and now we ask the targets for the validation data set so this is the input training input test uh, target of the input in training this is the validation data and this is the validation target so now if we see we already put bugging so when we run the code you see it only run the first line you can see the arrow here now it shows you okay here b is equal to regret and we are at this line so if we go to the plot and see when we click here you can see in the editor there is a button called con continue so when we press this it goes to the next line so this line is run and you can see the values of what it's saving so these are the two coefficients which we obtained when we ran between target and input so and again if you again see ip and all other variables are saved so let's go to the next line where i told you this should give you 3238 as value let's see if we get it or not so if you see here l value is 3238 and the second j value is of validation data so it should give 1389 so if you see 1389 now wow, again as I have explained it is going to the for loop it will go to how many columns did we give as input 2 so it will run 2 times so when we press first time if you see the n value 1 is saved then the k value it takes all the values until 3 to 8 3 because we have that many number of rows then it saves the data in that representative format if you see here 3238 and then again it comes back and value is changing to 2 it again runs all the 3238 times and then saves the data if you see here 2 times of 3238 but it represents Two different columns now we need to add them up to get the correct value so when we go to the next line you can see there is only one column now what we are asking it to calculate the error this is the input data thing and this is the target which is comparing it with. so when we press here you can see it's 
it's showing you the results it has a good amount of rmsc because it's not training upon anything it's just calculating the regression coefficients and just multiplying it although the uh, correlation is 0.88 quite good ns is 0.78 not bad so this is in training phase so now when we go to the uh, testing again it does the same thing q also has two columns so it runs twice if you see here the q value change to 2 and it continues and again it calculates the value mean and it gave you some data and then it calculates the error in validation which also can be saved and the function ends when it reaches the end point so if we see the testing set you see the correlation is quite high but the value of rmsc is very very high compared to training also the nsc value also quite dropped compared to the training data set this is because whatever the coefficients we have calculated here are for the training data set right we are just using those coefficients for validation as in the previous videos we used neural network where it was correcting the values until it satisfies a certain condition which we asked it to satisfy but in this case we don't have any mechanism as such because it's a simple regression model so it just tries to calculate based upon whatever the coefficient it has that would be the main reason why the accuracy is not as high as it can be so these are the results which we have obtained using the mlr code and this is how you can write a simple code for uh, developing an mlr model so that's it for this video in the next videos we will see some other models which can develop similar relationships like rainfall runoff modeling and check out its accuracies if you have followed until now and you have understood the concept you can uh, like the video share it with friends whom you think it will be useful and subscribe and you can also suggest me any models which you want to know and and ask me to develop the code so that it can be useful for you as well so let's meet in the next video until then please subscribe and let me know uh, if you have any doubts in the comments so that i can answer them see you in the next video